Welcome to the world of rallying. The first thing you need to do is to create your team. You can customize every detail, from the most basic information all the way to the color of your livery and your logo.
Setting up your team's headquarters in an old quarry was a great idea. Here you have everything you need to test drive your cars and train in preparation for the rallies. The upper part of the area is dedicated to asphalt tracks, the lower part to dirt roads. Your adventures as a professional driver start here. All you've got to do now is show you've got what it takes. Rally cars can be very demanding. First, let's see how you get on with the basics. Drive to the point indicated. If you find yourself near a training circuit, you can instantly start a timed session by pressing the appropriate button. These sessions are extremely useful for putting a car's performance to the test, or for improving your skills behind the wheel. Try and complete three laps of the circuit in the shortest time possible, and without hitting the cones. Three, two, one, go! When you have to perform a U-turn or go round a hairpin bend, you can use the handbrake. Try to perform a handbrake turn on the next corner. You'll get more experience the more you drive, and you'll be able to set even faster times. Now you can drive freely throughout the training area, including the quarry. Just like on the asphalt track, you can do timed training sessions on the dirt track as well.
Rallying is an extremely demanding discipline, both physically and mentally. A good driver needs to be able to concentrate on the road and listen to their co-driver's pace notes at the same time. If you aren't sure what the pace notes mean, or you just want to review them, you can check the guide provided. All the great drivers started out with standard performance cars. With this model, you'll be able to start making a name for yourself in the lower categories. We're ready. You can decide whether to jump straight into the race or continue training. The fast action option you see on the left lets you start various activities straight away, depending on your current location. When you're in your headquarters, for example, you can start a test drive session instantly. You can customize the appearance of your cars by applying new liveries. The first customization slot is always reserved for the team livery. This means that any modifications made to the livery in the first slot will be applied to all the cars in your garage. There are a select few drivers who have literally made rallying history, and Sebastian Loeb has assured his place in their ranks. The SL experience lets you relive his career through the cars and races that have made him the greatest rally driver of all time.
I was born in Haguenau in Alsace, around 30 kilometers to the north of Strasbourg, a town with approximately 35,000 inhabitants. When I was young, my main hobby was gymnastics. I started gymnastics very young because my father was a coach. He taught at the Oberhofen Gymnastics Club. Oberhofen is a small village, but the club is at a very high level. He's still there, actually. From the age of about two or three, I started going to the club with my dad. So, because I was often with him anyway, I started at the gymnastics school. All my mates from the village also went to gymnastics classes. It was the main sport in the village. My passion for cars and speed came about quite naturally. It came of its own accord. It started with bikes. I really loved skidding on bikes when I was a kid. Then it moved on to scooters, where I was always having to race with my mates and show them that I was the one with the best scooter skills. Then I had my first cars. It was the same principle. I soon realized that I was more gifted than most of my friends, and I got an incredible feeling from it. Where I come from, it wasn't even possible to ever imagine I could become a professional driver, world champion, etc. It's not something you plan. I started out in motorsports at the age of 22 with my very first rallies. I never had enough money to buy my own cart for go-karting, so I took part in an event called Youth Rally. For me, at that time, this was my only way in if I ever wanted to turn pro. This event is held in locations throughout France. Back then, the selections were made by the Federation and Peugeot. You joined by paying a 15 euro subscription fee, and then the best drivers from each region were selected to go to the nationals. The two winners in the national final won a rally season pass. In my first year, I came ahead of 15,000 other participants. But for various reasons, I ended up not being selected. I entered the event the following year, where I dominated the regional selections and the national final but was pulled up for a fort in the last heat. But following that competition, Dominique Hines contacted me, set up a meeting, and offered to help me start out in rallying. He bought a 106 Group N with his partner and their association. This allowed me to make my competition debut. My first race was a regional competition in Alsace with this car, and Dominique Hines was my co-driver. He explained how rally driving worked because I didn't know very much about it. First ever time, and we won our category in that first race. It flew by, but I still remember it to this day. It was a long time ago, back in 1997, but I have memories of that race I'll never forget. I met Danielle in 1997, when I was driving a 106 in France. He was co-driving for another driver in the same formula, so that's how we met. And then his driver retired at the end of that season, and my co-driver was scared and wanted to stop too. We got on well. We already knew each other. We'd had a night out after a rally in Sevin, and so we said, well, why not? It might be nice to work together. We got on. We had a good time. And that's how it happened just having a drink one night. In 1998, I participated in a competition called the Saxo Kit Car Trophy, which is, without a doubt, one of the highest standard competitions in France. Real racing cars enter. A kit car is already a high-performance vehicle, so this is where the driver makes all the difference. It was here that I managed to get spotted because I was neck and neck with experienced Formula racing drivers, Citroën drivers, most of whom were older than me. To be the youngest driver there, competing alongside them, often in the lead, for me, it was a major moment in my career. The people who were supporting me had invested a lot, and one day I came off the road. The car was insured, it was repaired, etc. Before the next race, we did a little test run, and I bust up the car again, but it wasn't insured for test runs. 
There was a lot of damage, a lot of money to be invested for repairs. We didn't have the money. I didn't have it. And those supporting me didn't either. For me, it was the end of my career. I thought that it would all stop there. We couldn't enter the following races. But then we got a sponsor who helped get the vehicle back up to scratch. I won the last few races. There were cash prizes for positions, and that's how we got back on track. But it was a really difficult time. I was a young French driver, climbing up in the rallying world. I'd started to dream big, and then it all came to a sudden end. It was a touch-and-go moment. 1999 was the year it all came together. I dominated the championship. In fact, I won it, so I have really fond memories of that time. It was also at this point that Citroën started to take note that I was there, that I was an up-and-coming young driver who no doubt had some potential. It was from here on that Citroën started to become more and more interested in me.
three, two, one, go. One hundred, crest fifty. Right five and left five forty. Crest seventy. Right six plus one thirty. Right three plus and left six fifty. Tightens into left four and right three plus opens fifty. Left five minus long. Right three plus and right three opens five to forty. Crest, 110. Right 6 plus, 120. Right 4 minus, 70. Left 2 plus long, 180.
Cross 90. Titans and Crest 50. 
Your final position determines how many credits you earn. Use credits to purchase more powerful and more prestigious cars. Three, two, one, go. Right six ninety. Right five opens one sixty. Left five plus two sixty. Left. 
1999 was also the first year I entered the World Championship. I was selected for the French team, which meant I could enter five races in the World Championship. Two on dirt roads, just to learn the ropes, in Finland and England, and three on asphalt. The Corsica Rally, the Spanish Rally, and the San Remo Rally in Italy. That was also with a Saxo kit car. I was in a category which gave me the chance to meet other young drivers from across the world. My driving was now being talked about on the international scene. In 1999, I won the Saxo trophy. The people who were helping me at the time decided to sell the car. We won and the car was sold. We didn't really know where to head the next season. Thanks to the support of a partner, we decided to go for the French Dirt Rally, which the media takes less of an interest in than the French Asphalt Rally. There wasn't really any official involvement of the manufacturers in this championship. However, in preparation for the World Rally Championship, it was essential to be able to prove I was capable of high speeds on dirt roads too. We entered and I did the first race. Back then we only had the budget for one race. And I won it. It was from then on that Citroën said I should continue. They helped me out a little bit to enter the second race, and I won again. The program became semi-official, and Citroën was now a partner. They took over the management of the financial side of the program. I wasn't paid to drive, but I knew that I could drive without worrying too much about where to find the money. So that year, I won the French Dirt Rally Championship. As a kind of reward, Citroën let me go for the last heat in the French Asphalt Rally Championship, the one with the most media attention, the real French Rally Championship. They gave me the car for this heat, and I won the race. This particular French Championship asphalt heat was the first time I was ever paid to drive. It was at the end of the French Championship in 2000. Things started to change. In 2000, I also raced in two heats of the World Championship, still with the backing of the Federation. This time, for the WRC, I had a car that was up in amongst the top 10 vehicles. It wasn't a manufactured car, but I was able to compete and finished ninth and sixth, I believe, in the WRC. 2001 was definitely the most important year in my career. Alongside the French Championship, Daniel and I were also entered into the Junior World Championship with a Saxo for Citroën. It was a semi-official program, but we found ourselves up against young drivers from across the world who were there to try and get noticed and break into rallying. We dominated the programme and won it too. Following these great results, at the end of the year, Guy Freclin decided to give me the official WRC Xara for a World Championship heat. Citroën were progressively making their way towards the WRC. They were getting ready. They had two official drivers and gave me a third car. It was a revelation, the turning point in my career. I finished ahead of the two other drivers and only 11 seconds behind the winner. This was my first event as an official driver and a trigger for me. All the manufacturers called me. Mitsubishi, Subaru, those participating at championship level at the time and those I'd tried to make moves towards for trials in the past. I'd never had answers from them before, but that day, they called me. Everyone offered me official driver contracts with durations over several years. I decided to stay loyal though, to stay with Citroën, who'd got me that far. I think it was the right choice.
Three, two, one, go. Crest and right three opens five and fifty. Crest into left six and left three opens five.
three, two, one, go. Press to right three rupees five, fifty. Press into left six and left three opens five. Crest and right five forty. Left four opens forty. Right six very long, tightens four. Caution, left five tightens and right four long over crest. Left five long opens, 40. Right four opens and crest, 90. Left four tightens, long, 150. Caution, tight hairpin right at junction and left six, 200. Left five tightens, 180. Right five tightens, 70. Left five minus, 120. Very long, 100. Crest, 200. Caution, left 5, very long, tightens 3, 40. Right 6, tightens long, 50. Left 4, tightens. Right five and left six. Caution, right three opens, 50. Right five and left four plus long, 130. Left six minus, 70. Crest, 40. Right five and left six, very long, 200. Finish.